Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechfilly.com, and now columnist for the Jewish Press. Right. Now, the Jewish Press is a nationally distributed news, weekly newspaper for the Orthodox Jewish community, and I have a column there called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. <laughs> And uh, but today we have right. a, we take a little bit of a of a turn away from uh, government and politics, and we and we have with us the executive director, the relatively new executive yeah. director of the Albany JCC or the Sydney Albert Albany Jewish Community Center, Adam Chaskin. Yeah, no. So Adam, Thank welcome you. to the Jewish View. Thank it's you a very real much. pleasure to have you here. Uh, honored to be here today. Thank and, you. And you come, what, via Schenectady, JCC? Or? I did before working. Yeah. I've been nine months here at the uh, Sydney Albert Albany JCC, and before that I did work as the assistant director of the Schenectady JCC yeah, for a couple so, of years. So how was that experience between Schenectady and Albany? I mean, are they equal in terms of activity, in terms of membership? I mean, The Albany JCC is slightly bigger. Um, in several areas, just physical size of the building. It's a, well, about five to 6,000 square feet bigger. Membership is uh, you know, about a, 30, a third more uh, membership-wise. Uh, Programming-wise, Albany JCC has a very large early childhood program compared, and the Skanky JCC has a very large after-school program compared. They have a much larger after-school, in fact, one of the larger after-school programs in the country, Skanky has. So that's, uh, and we both have fitness centers and pools and, and such, so there's a lot of similarities. Uh, well, uh, truth be told and full disclosure, in 23 years ago, 1993, I worked at the Albany JCC, and I was teasing you, I said, you know, before you were born, but you're like hardly, so I don't know how old you are, but you certainly could pass. <laughs> I thought Adam was here to help us work out. So. I have to tell also, full disclosure, that I work out three times a you know, here I am, uh, obviously an Orthodox rabbi, but listen, it's, you have to have a, people say, Rabbi, you're at the JCC. I say, you have to have a healthy neshama, hel healthy soul inside of a healthy body. So it does work together, and oh. I appreciate the JCC for having a Jewish environment that even you can work out with. So, no, it, and such as separate men and separate swimming for men and women. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of programming that caters to the Orthodox uh, community needs. Yeah, so keep up the good work. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, obviously, fitness and, and, and health and wellness in general, in a lot of different ways, fitness being one of the ways, is extremely important to all people, but it's definitely a value of the Jewish faith and something that's very important to us to help promote at the center. And you still have a kosher kitchen? Yes, we do. Just as Schenectady also has a kosher kitchen? Yes. Just, well, I mean, we're here yes. already talking about Certainly it. Might as well bring in. We, we should have had Mark Weintraub here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way. I think Mark's on vacation right now. Oh, but well, there um, you go. Good certainly, we serve um, Monday and Wednesday. We serve senior, we have a senior meal program. Um, if you're not a senior, you're still able to come. Just there's a, a, do a donation that's requested for coming to that uh, meal program on Monday and Wednesday nights. Uh, I know out at Skankti they have a lunchtime program uh -huh. during there, so you can go to Skankti for lunch and come to <laughs> Albany for dinner and get your kosher meals in. So where, uh, so on Monday and Wednesday, sometimes there are programs attached to the meal. Certainly are. You know, Claire Siegel is our senior director, does a fantastic job with programming, and yeah, she was there when I was there. So yeah, that's no, like, she definitely know, she's, she's there for a long time. Long time valuable asset of the JCC and. Uh, very often, as you said, before programming, she'll bring in guest lecturers and speakers mm -hmm. to, to talk about a wide variety of topics. Right. Um, sometimes she brings in entertainment acts, so it's uh, a little less uh, intellectual and just more pure fun and enjoyment. But uh, it's, it's enjoying. And their auditorium where they, where they eat is right across from my office, so it's nice to be able to walk out on Monday and Wednesdays uh, oh, a little before 5 and join the group sometimes and just and hear the discussions. You have dinner, too. Every once in a while, I eat with them, too. But mm -hmm. I, you know, so a lot of times I'm... I'm neglectful to put my reservation in, so I don't want to. I want to make sure everyone has enough food beforehand. Oh, okay. So, so you got to also have a reservation. They, they, we do ask that you call by 9 a.m. that morning, so we just make sure we have enough food for everyone okay. that's coming. And, and what's the cutoff age for a senior? I hate to ask this because of AARP and all that. Yes, yeah, so we are a little higher than AARP. Mm -hmm. We are 65 and over. <gasps> really? Yes, but you are welcome to. If you're not 65, you're welcome to come. There's just. But a, then people are going to think I'm 65. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a recommended donation. <laughs> to help cover with this the program and what we is the recommended donation uh, it's a small like it's, ten dollars it's or less something? than that yes it's yeah, less okay. than that. and we, the reason for that is we do this program in partnership with the albany uh, city department of aging mm -hmm. 
And so we do have some regu government regulations, you were mentioning the government before, that we do have to follow because um, they do subsidize part of the, uh, the funding for this program. Now, do you, I, I, when I worked at the JCC, uh, I worked there from 93 to 95, and I was uh, the membership and marketing director, but I would always come in early, and I'd work out from like 7.30 to 8.30, shower, get changed, and then go to work at 9 o'clock. So do you do something similar? Are you working out there? You look I healthy, actually, you look in shape. So. I actually don't work, have yet to work out at the JCC. I do exercise. I'm fortunate to have some equipment in my home, oh. um, mostly as a result of my children, who uh, are very good athletes. But uh, So I take advantage. I get up uh, most mornings early, 5, 5.30, and uh, we'll go downstairs and exercise, shower, and head to work. Uh -huh. You know, there, since it is the Jewish Community Center and this is the Jewish view, I want to talk a lot about the Jewish programming. Uh, and the Chabad has joined together with the JCC, and we like working with them because, again, like I say, Jewish Community Center it really is a beautiful idea that everybody can get together. I mean, obviously, you have different segments of Jew to Jewish life and say, well, we're this and we're not that and we don't go to that. And here, like, everybody is welcome. As just even Mark's bringing out, there's kosher. So if, even if you're Orthodox, some non-Orthodox obviously can eat kosher too. So it's something <laughs> that, you know, it's just something that the whole community can get involved with. One of the bigger things of, I know, I mean, you can talk about it. I know that Purim play gets a... The, the carnival is something for the kids, for our viewers. I mean, I know you know Mark over here. But no, but certainly, I mean, uh, being a Jewish community center, we can't, we can't, we will not lose sight of the J, the, the Jewish part of that. Uh, even though we do service the entire community, well, it's important that we are a, a place where all Jews, no matter what their affiliation or lack of affiliation, feel comfortable coming and that they can grow. We talked about, you know, health and wellness that we want the JCC a place where all Jews can come and grow spiritually, mentally, and that happens with various programming, as you alluded to. We have the Perm Carnival, which is open to the entire community. We recently had a Lake Bomer celebration for the entire community. We did a Hanukkah candle lighting for the community. So right now we're doing a lot of individual around some of the holidays events. We also, um, you know, in partnership with Abad, have some th activities that come in for, for the kids where they can learn how to make certain things, the shofar and such for the different holidays. The Hanukkah menorah. Yeah, Hanukkah menorahs. And one thing that, a position that does not currently exist and you know, didn't exist when I came into play is an actual Jewish cultural director. And that is a position that's extremely important to me mm -hmm. to be able to hire in the near term. Of course, you know, when you hire someone, that means money. And so there's some budgetary restraints, but that and haven't been there less than a year. Mm -hmm. But it's something that'll be very important. Probably yes. be the first position we add to so the center. Sam Shore was, used to be the Jewish yes. cultural Yes, many years ago the, also. Of course, many years ago, because I'm so old. Of course, mm -hmm. everything is many years ago. No, but uh, but Arit Magnus was at Schenectady. Jesus yep, just recently so, retired. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I forgot who the name of the woman who took over. Judy Benami has taken over oh, at Schenectady. Benami. Oh, yeah. Benami. Now, let, I like people to get to know you as an individual and not just as your title. So we always ask first-timers some personal questions questions just so that you can move. So we already heard that you have two kids? I have two boys, yep. Two boys. And which I presume looking at your finger that you also have a wife. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still do. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll find out when I go home, but okay. no. <laughs> and how old are you? I am 45. 45. Yes. And where do you live and where do you go to shul? And Certainly. So we live in Niskuna, right on the Niskuna Schenectady border. We're members of Congregation Gates of Heaven out uh -huh. in Schenectady. Um, been married, it will be 22 years later this year, wow. in October. Very nice. And have a 19 year old son who just finished his freshman year at the University of Michigan studying engineering. And have a 17 year old son who just finished his junior year of high school at Niskuna High School. Oh, very nice. And what was your background? Uh, where did you go to college? And Certainly, I also went to the University of Michigan, oh. um, where my son is. That's also where I met my wife, so there's a little bit of household tradition there. Uh, it's a I, big sports school. It is a big sports school. Um, I also have an engineering degree in, from the University of Michigan. And, but my primary background before getting into the nonprofit world was actually in the world of uh, basketball. I was a college basketball coach for many, many years. <laughs> and what, what originally brought me to this community was uh, a, I did sort of a period of time coach at Siena College here in the Capital oh, District. Right. Okay. So uh, are you coaching the basketball teams at the J? So I have not coached. Could get you into trouble. Uh, yeah, you know? so I'm not coaching the team at the J, but I am involved with Maccabi USA. Uh, for mm -hmm. those of our you know, viewers who might not be familiar, 
Um, Maccabi is a sporting event that's for Jewish athletes. Every four years in Israel is the Maccabi Yah. It's the third largest sporting event in the entire world, right behind the Summer and Winter Olympics. Uh, this summer, actually, I'll be in Berlin, Germany, coaching one of the USA national teams at the European Maccabi wow. Games. Uh, that'll be, I actually leave on the uh, 21st so of this month. So they give month. you the time off for that. That's very yeah. good. Very so, nice. And I have coached with the, as even when I was working at Siena College, my first experience with all the JCC was as a volunteer coach for the JCC Maccabi Games. So I've been a volunteer with the Albany JCC for several years for that. So I grew up in Brooklyn and I always called it Maccabee. Yeah. Maccabee tomato, games. tomato. You know? <laughs> and then I came up here and everyone started calling him Maccabi and I thought it was Maccabre, yeah. you know, which is yeah. like, wow, <laughs> What's the, what are these games, Maccabre games, you know, so anyway, I, I, it's my, you know, Brooklyn downstate, upstate, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, basketball seems to be, now, w w Michigan, they, the Wolverines? Yes. Oh, okay, I got that right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you got to know these things, you know. So you're a, you're uh, a SUNY guy. So. <laughs> I am a SUNY guy, Do and they I'm even proud have of a it. Basketball team there in SUNY. <laughs> no, we got good football. Right. Um, but what's your um, involvement as you know a, a resident? I mean, do you? take off your executive director hat at some point and just sort of blend in and just kind of, or do people come up to you, and I mean this respectfully because it happened to me, you know, and while you're working out or while you're doing something else, they'll say, hey, you know, what about this? What about this? What about this? Well, that's part of the reason why I don't work out at the JCC uh -huh. is because my experience when I was working at Skankety JCC is that sometimes it's hard to get through a whole workout without being interrupted, and that's kind of my time. And so I just find it easier instead of potentially offending you know, a member. I don't even, that's the primary reason I don't work out at the JCC and I choose to do it at home just for that purpose. So that when I'm at work, I'm fully available to the members and the staff for whatever their, their needs might be. Um, was, in the community, um, you know, now, not as much. When I was coaching, I got a lot, stopped a lot more uh -huh. uh, for people to ask questions of me than I do as now that I'm in the, you know, the JCC nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the other things is the day camp, which is very big. And I think someone told me, obviously, that the nursery program is one of the biggest in Albany. It is. Our, 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 our early child care program, which starts at age two months and goes up through kindergarten programs, is the largest in the whole capital region. Oh, really? Currently, we have about approximately 245 children enrolled, all except from age five on down to two months. Um, and you mentioned summer camps. We do right now have summer camps going on starting at age three on up through 15. Camp alum. Camp, we have camp, it starts with Camp Toff okay. for the youngest ones, the three to five year olds. Then we have Camp Olam, which is located on our beautiful uh, lake property up near Grafton Lake. And that goes up through you know, uh, school age, uh, elementary school. And then we have a teen camp, which is at Warner Lake, uh, not far from the JCC also, where they get to go uh, water skiing. They use motorboats for not the teen camp. Not far from Camp Giva. No, not Which at all. Which is in Burn, yep. right. Okay. So, <laughs> Just thought I'd mention. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> and, um, you know, right now it's been a great summer. We were only a week and a half in, and so we can have a few less rainy days. Like we had our first week, it'll even be better, but uh, we've only had to do have alternate rain plans on one day so far. Do you go out and visit the camps? Certainly do. Yeah, you know, do. I am. I'm not out necessarily out there every day, but, no, no, no. but no. especially with this being my first year also, I'm making a point to be out several times and at different times of the day so that I can see the different elements of, of, the, of camp. Do you, and you have a, a setup for food over at the Grafton? Yes, um, so most, most of the campers do bring their own lunches. We do have an option for people to order kosher lunches ahead of time, okay. so that the families can sign up for that and we provide that and have it delivered up there. What's your relationship with Terror, the kosher restaurant that opened up? Uh, right now, it, it not a lot. We have had them cater some events at the JCC, and certainly we've you know, assisted in making publicizing by handing out brochures and flyers and posting it on our community board, the information about the restaurant. Now, when, okay, this is the, uh, I got sidetracked from this question. When it goes back to the early childhood, when someone wants to bring their, enroll their child in early childhood, they have to sign up as a member of the JCC. Yes, they are, by signing up for early childhood, you actually are a member. It's all included. I guess it's all a little how you word it. But uh, you are a member when you sign up for our early child care program. And there are a lot of, so there are a lot of non-Jewish certainly pa families who sign up for early childhood because it's such a good environment, safe environment, because they know that their child will be cared for properly. 
then there's no question about it. You yes. Know? No. So just to let that, that was my personal experience. You know, well, thank you. I, I'm glad. You know. So well, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, we were fortunate that, you know, you're not the largest for years after year after year without also having high quality. And, right. you know, Sharon Mudge is the director of our early childhood program, and she and her staff do an outstanding job of taking care of the young children that we have here mm -hmm. and, and nurturing them and, and educating them. She's been well, there 20-some-odd years also. Yes, you know, she, she's she, been there she, quite a while. There's and very we, little turnover at the gym. It and, must and, be a good reason for it. And, and we hear lots of positive feedback from the school systems of how our children are so well prepared when they do go into elementary schools. So um, it's an outstanding program, one we're very proud of. And yeah, wanted. oh, absolutely. And I'm just saying that, you know, so, so you're attracting based on the good, the, the wonderful care that you give to the preschools, you attract the non-Jewish population. Certainly do. Just, it's not that you're looking for a non-Jewish population. No. But, you know, what, 60% of your membership is non-Jewish? It's actually it probably a little closer to 65, actually. 65. Yeah, it's not yeah. Jewish. Talk about, I mean, even though you, now, have, you don't your, have... Wait, a, I was just asking, what's yeah. your membership number? Well, that's what I was going to say. So I mean, we, we same, measure in what's called yeah. in units, and you probably remember from when you're there. So, uh, so it's household units. We're approximately 1,450 household units right now. That yeah. translates to a, a little over 5,000 people. In one single person who signs up is a unit, he could be One household. So if you're a single person, you're a unit. If you're a family of four or five, you're a unit. Right. So that's why... The, but the total is like 5,000 people. Right. And that okay. does not include uh, our senior programs uh -huh. because um, we service throughout the year approximately 4,000 seniors throughout the year. Are you related to, uh, is, is that meal program related to Meals on Wheels or anything with the... Govern, federal government? I mean, the, the, we do get funding from the Department of Aging for our meal yeah. program, which I think also supports Meals on Wheels, but we don't have a direct connection. You don't have a direct connection. No. Okay. But the seniors you were saying don't have to be members? No, all of our so senior that. programs. We have a beautiful senior center. In addition to the meals, where seniors can come any time that the center's open, which is 5.30 in the morning till 10 at night during the week and 7 o'clock on the weekends. And there is activities going on, whether it's something as simple as playing bridge or mahjong with friends, or there's you know painting classes, singing classses. There's a wide variety of activities in our senior program. And don't forget, you have the Jewish War Veterans Meeting, and you have a Jewish War Veterans Room. Certainly, right near our front entrance, when you walk in, the first room you come to is our Jewish War Veterans Room, and there's some terrific uh, memorabilia in there that you can see of some of the history from previous wars, World War II and World War I. And yes, the Jewish War veterans do in our local chapter do meet at our location. <laughs> it's all about food in the Jewish War. <laughs> it's all about food. Um, did you? Uh, I know at the Schenectady JCC they had this time capsule. You know, are you doing anything in terms of uh, you know historically to? We actually have a small committee. If you want to join, we are looking for more members that are. We're doing a Jewish history of Albany, and the uh, the end goal is to have an exhibit that will be on display not only at JCC, but will be portable to go through the committee. Wrote, I already wrote the history of <laughs> Jews in Albany. I right, so I'll be on the, the committee, Mary. Yeah, the so I know your background, so there's certainly, we're looking at it, you know, because the JCC, this is actually our 100th year of existence. Okay. It's founded in 1915, hmm. and so we don't have anyone left from when it was founded, <laughs> but we do have some people that weren't much past that, that we've been able to reach out to, and we're going through our, uh, some people have brought in a lot, some personal memorabilia. The JCC had some files that were well, been sitting I in should, storage for a I long time. I should give this to you then. This says, <laughs> get, centered the so. <laughs> get centered at the JCC. So, get centered at the old AJCC. So, there's a, a button of from the past. And uh, I thought I would just bring this in. All so right, here thank you. you. You're going to have there a you go. memorabilia. Now you got more memorabilia. <laughs> I didn't expect to give it to you, but go ahead. I'm sure I have two or three more. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say about the, I mean, you haven't been here for a long time, you know, say five years, ten years compared, but so far, how is the membership going in the day camp? Certainly. So our membership numbers are up over about 24% this calendar year. Well, that's very excellent. We went to a new membership model starting January 1, where we now offer month-to-month -month memberships. So there's, you don't have to have a long-term commitment. And we also reduced our rates to be much more competitive. Uh, in camp, we're having a great year with camp. We're also over up over 20% over last year's numbers. That's very good. And Those so, are excellent. So things well, are going Certainly with well. the bus board, with the... Bus wraps, you know, yes. that certainly does help. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of positive feedback from those bus wraps. A lot of people, a lot more than I ever expected, to be honest, come in saying, oh, well, you know, we always ask people, how did you find out about us? And a lot of people mention the ads on the back of buses. Now, let's also say that you changed your logo 
uh, yes. to just a red J or something to that effect. Uh, right, yeah, the color sometimes changes. It's, it's usually uh, a blue or red uh, square with a white J hollowed out out of it. That's in uniformity with our national, national. organization, JCCA, uh, the National JCC Association, who uh, came up with a new branding guidelines, uh, which I've been waiting for. You know, I've only been in the JCC field for a few years, so I've been waiting for a few years, and certainly I know many people have been waiting for many more years. So there's a more uniform look. So as you go for work or just you happen to move, um, you know, and you see that branding, you'll know well, I have what's been, available to you. It's interesting because just around the time that you changed, I noticed that there was another company, I forgot which company it was, who also has the J as their logo. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's something that's totally unrelated to the fitness and... You know, is there something to so. say, say to JCC, even though it's an organization we said it's connected to Albany, but it really is a national organization. Do you work with them, and what do you gain, really, if you are working together? Certainly. So we, we, the one thing about the JCC world that has impressed me from the first time I started working in it is the amount of collaboration. There is no secrets. Everyone wants to help each other. We have a very extensive listserv that you can put a question out, who has this type of program and how do you run it, you'll have answers that day. Um, people will send you everything so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't like to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I like to do. So you get that help. The actual national office is in, located in New York City and they have staff there that has a lot of experience. A lot of them are former employees at JCCs in various areas. And so they have certain expertise from having worked at several JCCs, whether their expertise is in membership or fitness or Jewish cultural, um, early childhood, you know, camping. They have multiple different uh, experts that can come and consult with you and give you ideas that maybe you didn't think of. Um, that, and all that's included in being a talk, member of the association. Talk to us about the Pillars Dinner. Certainly. That you started, uh, that was started before you came, but, yes. you know, it's, what is it, 20 years now that it's? It's been over 20 years that yeah. we've been having the Pillars. And you honor three people? Every year we honor three members of the community, um, for three Pillars of the community. It's a brunch that has the last few years been held in, in April time frame. It used to be a dinner. And right, a, yeah, so I understand it's been moved around. I guess at one time it was in the fall, and at one time it was a dinner. So the last few years, at least, it's, it's been a, a Sunday brunch in the spring, which, at least at the moment, that's what we plan on continuing for, for next year also. And it's a terrific uh, opportunity to honor people who have contributed to the Jewish community, to the JCC, and the community at large. Not everyone that's honored every year is a member of the Jewish community. They're just people who have helped right. benefit the Jewish community sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just our way of giving back and recognizing the great works that these people have done. Mm -hmm. And it's a big fundraiser for you. Certainly. You know, certainly you know, we, there is a charge to come, and so we do take advantage of, of being able to no, raise some funds. It, it certainly is you know, necessary, and you, know, yeah. you certainly can't rely on the Federation. I mean, they give you a good chunk of money, but you can't rely on them for the, you know, and it's public information oh, what certainly. they give you. But uh, approximately how much does, do you net from the Pillars Dinner? Uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, it changes every, every year. I mean, this year was a, was a better year. But we'll and net. Is it six figures, five figures? No, no, it's a five figure. I mean, it's the, the, net, the net number, you know, profits is somewhere, you know, depending on the year, and it's anywhere from 20 to 40, depending on the given year. That's the net. Yes, yeah, is the okay. net. But the, how's the general budget? Uh, you don't have to exact numbers, but right. I mean, are you making it or is it the Jewish well, community? Well, I mean, we, we, you mentioned fundraising, and one of the things I mentioned, I had lower rates. We, we do our best to keep our costs under control both internally but also to our customers. And we do rely on fundraising as a significant part of our budget through various means, whether it's events, the federation you mentioned, individual giving. There's a wide mm -hmm. variety of types of fundraising, and that makes up you know, 10, a little 10 percent or a little more of our budget is just mm -hmm. straight fundraising. So, uh, one thing that we are starting to do is try to increase our scholarship budgets through fundraising as to, so that when people who can't afford some of the programs, even though we do mm -hmm. our best to keep the costs low, whether it be just membership, whether it be childcare, camp, whatever it might be, uh, one of my main focuses and some of the things I've been soliciting funds since I've arrived is to increase our amount that we can provide in scholarships so that we don't have to turn anyone away. Do you find that, that important? it's important for you to be there at the meeting for these people who give large donations? It's yes. just not a fundraising, director of fundraising who goes, but it's important for you to go with the director of fundraising? Yes, certainly. I mean, and certainly. It, any donor, but especially you mentioned, you know, some of the higher level donors. I think it's extremely important that they 
that I have a chance to meet with them, make sure I understand what their wishes are for the money they're donating and the investment. Um, you know, I don't look at the money that anyone gives, whether it's a dollar or it's a, a much more significant amount, as really a donation. I view it as, a, as an investment. It's an investment in the center, it's an investment in the community, and people want to know what's going on with their investments and how, well, what's the return on their investments. Well, I'll tell you a funny story of 1994, you, uh, the JCC was looking for a senior van, and one of the uh, uh, Fritzy, Be uh, Fritzy Becker yeah. was a uh, member. And she, her brother is uh, Kirk Douglas. Oh, okay. And uh, she wrote to him, and he sent the check for twenty-five hundred dollars towards the van. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. I thought it was wonderful, and especially I photocopied it, and I still have it. And <laughs> see the signature. I mean, it's okay. I don't have to. Yeah. You know, I think the statute of limitations is over. <laughs> with, uh, but I mean, it's just one of those things that you, you know, how many people then said to me, uh, "Well, you could have put another zero on there," yeah. you know? It's like, you know, but you know, as a fundraiser, you look at it and you thank for you'd be thankful for whatever you get. But, right. you know, we were able, we had this, um, like a United Way thermometer of, you know, go, going up to inspire people to give money for the van, and we raised enough money for the van. Terrific. You know, and uh, so it's, you know. Well, it's rare that you're going to get someone to give a very significant amount of money the first time they ever help the organization. It's, so it's, it's a building, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you should be very fortunate that he gave $2,500. And if a relationship had been cultivated, maybe maybe there would have a chance to get another or more down the line. Well, um, but that's just, you know, how fundraising works. That's it's, right. It's, as you know, he most grew up in life. Amsterdam. You knew I did that. not know that. Oh, he, local, that's yeah. why, because oh, okay. he grew up in Amsterdam and with his two All sisters. families, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, well, the, then maybe they had to add a job over here to cultivate, yeah, to, to cultivate yeah. that a little. Well, there used to be a JCC in Amsterdam at the right. time, too. So, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, we have a very rich Jewish community uh, in the greater capital district. And, you know, shameless plug, you know, my website, jbiztechvalley.com, uh, lists all the congregations that we have in the greater county, 16 well, counties. All the JCCs in there? And absolutely. Yes, and there fact, you go. In fact, I didn't know it was his first day, but I came in to, uh, to see who the executive director was and say, hi, I'm starting this website. And he says, good, I'm starting my job. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I, I got a, you know, and you were very gracious. You came out, you spoke to me for three, four minutes, and, you know, you had nothing to say. I had nothing to say because we were both starting at the same time. <laughs> so now it's, uh, and we've, you know, developed a friendship, and I appreciate that. Certainly. So, um, you know, I really think that, you know, the Cybex and everything that you have uh, at the fitness area and the indoor pool and the outdoor pool uh, really adds a lot to this whole area, and you, you do a great job with uh, the, the environment and keeping even the outside community around Whitehall Road a healthy, safe area, and that's very important. When I was there, we, uh, they, I was given the task to have uh, a celebration for the anniversary of the outdoor pool. Okay. I don't know if it was the 15th, 10th, 10th anniversary, 20th anniversary, I don't remember what it was. But I had joint legislative resolutions passed in both houses of the state legislature. Yeah. I had the Common Council, the county legislature. I had all these proclamations and resolutions, and we had a big uh, riser, and we had cameras, and we had all these people on a hot sun, summer day, you know, and we had more elected officials and government people than we had in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they were there up on, and they didn't care. They mm -hmm. would talk to anyone, you know, even if we had three people, and I was just dying because, you know, you want to show an audience, you know. Of course. And you had like 20 people on the riser, and they all wanted to say something, and you had like five people. <laughs> Outdoors. Come to the outdoor pool. <laughs> but we, you know, we made the best of it, and I was happy to, uh, you know, to, to have the opportunity, you know, to honor a pool. I never, <laughs> I, you know, I was given this assignment. I said, how do you honor a pool? You know, I started to, you know, make my creative juices started to flow. <laughs> All right. so, Everything is good over here, Mark. I'm Are good. you going to exercise more now that we? Uh, I don't know. What's the what? What is it? Uh, month to month. Uh, um, for, for a single guy. For a single guy, you know, I don't have our rates From memorized right now. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I know come we, see you. Yeah, we'll please, make a special deal. Okay. Please do. Please come on in. Um, <laughs> well, that's the. Oh, I know what. I'm, you know, the, nowadays when we have, uh, we we don't have a set family. You know, I used to do this when people would come in; they were just friends. 
and they, didn't ha they, they thought it was too high to have two single memberships. I'd say, well, say you're a couple, even if they were two guys or two girls. Say you're a couple, and we'll give you the couple membership. You know? We call that a two-person rate now. A two-person rate. to make sure with all the political definitions of what couples are and are not, mm -hmm. we call it a two-person rate. That's very sensitive. So and, and, we and also started a single-parent family rate, which we never had before also. And what about the dressing rooms? Because that was a big deal, unisex. Uh, or, or parent, child, uh, right. having... Right, so where a, there's a male locker room, yeah. there's a female locker room, right. and then there is a unisex slash family changing area. There also. is? Yes. Okay, because we were trying to figure out for a long time how to make that happen, and yes. I just, okay, I'm glad you figured it out. There is. Okay, now I'm done. Thank uh, you. Now, <laughs> you can, now we can start exercising. <laughs> Sam, you're doing great work, even though you haven't been here for a long time. You're doing some very good success and to continue with the good success and helping out the entire Jewish community, which is really, I think, very, very important in its own right because you have so many different segments. Here it's a center, Jewish center, where everybody can join together and feel at home. Continue good work and do it with good health. Much Thank success you to you, Madam, very much. Thank you very much.